All right. So first of all, I'd like to welcome everyone and thank you so much for joining this um, virtual open event. We are very glad to have you here and we hope that you would learn more about EIT and if you need to know more and you have questions beyond this um, session, I will be posting an email later for you to continue with your questions. So for now, to ensure that we have a smooth session, let's go ahead and turn off all our notifications so that nothing will be popping up on your screen. So let's go to the... Um, right corner side at the lower part you can see that here you can see like a gear icon on this part and kindly click that when you do that you can see my settings please go to notification settings and please ensure or double check that all the boxes in there are not checked okay it should be not Lisa, checked. just, so just hang on a minute there's a yes. Moses can't hear you now. I can't be sure why. Do you have any suggestions for him? Okay, some Moses can't hear you. I'm not sure if it's probably on his side because I think everybody else can hear. Yeah. I'll just I'll write. Um, um all right, let me just double check. Um can you please give me a thumbs up if you can hear us both clearly or see us clearly? Thumbs up. Yep. Or if you're done with the notification settings, thanks, guys. Please give it a thumbs up. Thank okay. you. Okay. So thank you for the information. Oh, you've got such a hard name to want to call. So oh, thank you. They must reconnect. Yeah, that'll probably help when in doubt. Hey. All right. I just asked Moses to oh, reach out. Thank you, Lisa. Maybe yeah. that would work. Yeah. All right. Thank you I can see. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Go for it, Lisa. Go for it. All right. So, yep, I can see a lot of thumbs up here. So, I'm thinking that you are all good to go with the notification settings. Just make sure they are all not checked and let's move on. Okay, next right. slide. Oh, you've mm -hmm. done. Thank you. Super. Okay, and again, that's just me, Edwina. Shall I can take over here, Lisa? Yes. Uh, so everyone, I would like to, or yep, I can just go on with the slides and you can do it later. So again, um, the name for a virtual open um, event um, right now is the Effective Communication for Engineers and our Academic Public Affairs Manager, uh, Ms. Edwina Ross, will be presenting this to you and she will be um, giving us more information about herself later on. And um, just to answer the most common question in here, um, so that you can focus on the lecture later and won't be wondering. So we will be um, distributing or sending out a copy of the slides and of course the video recording of the session within the next two business days via email. So please monitor your inboxes, also your junk email folder. and. For those asking if there would be certificates, um, I'm so sorry, but at this point or at this um, instance, we don't provide certificates because um, this is not a technical webinar. If you need a certain certificate that you can you know, post in your LinkedIn and so on, please go to our webinars page or events page and look at our upcoming webinars and you can see our technical webinars there we can provide certificates for those technical webinars um this is just more like um knowing more about eit our courses and how we do things so i will now um, endorse you to um, edwina lisa can i just ask when you contact everybody can you send my email address out just in case there's a question about something that i go over today that somebody would like to you'd like to inquire further about that would be fantastic so that they can contact me sure sure no worries right. are you comfortable if we put your email address in the chat or do you want that in the email? oh yeah, yeah that's fine that's the easiest of course whatever that would be brilliant um awesome. just quickly i i graduated as an english teacher and taught so i'm starting everybody i hope that's okay i can see a couple of hands up uh, i know that najib wanted to be able to record his voice somewhere. Um, but 
all your questions will be will be answered. Lisa will go through everything. Um, I was an English teacher. I taught as an English teacher, um, both in the UK and here, although I actually graduated in South Africa. I'm a migrant and I have worked for this uh, lovely college for 20 years. So don't ask how old I am because it gives it away. Um, all right, communication. I need to make clear I'm not an engineer and that's probably why you're not getting a certificate coming out of the other end of this session. But I do believe deeply that communication is critical. It's critical in your everyday work, but it's critical in your life too. As this guy, Brian Tracy says, it can be learned. And if you're willing to work at it, you can rapidly improve the quality of every part of your life. And I absolutely believe that. Now I'm going to ask you to write in the chat box. I won't be able to respond to all of you, but look at that image. Whatever word comes into your mind as to what is positive about that image, can you please put that in the chat right now and I'll look at a few of them. What strikes you as being positive about that image? Anything, you're not gonna be right or wrong. Communication is a very soft thing um, that, that's, that can be discussed. Okay, body language, good. Thank you. Oh, no, I'm going to be able to pronounce your name before the end. I know it. Happy collaboration or communication. Attention was given to the speaker. Good. So the main speaker is standing, you can see, but somebody else has made a comment. They're all paying that person attention. Yes, they look happy. Please remember that that positive, a positive demeanor can so assist good communication. Attention to detail, all smiling. Thank you. You see, what I'm going to be teaching you today, you mostly know. All right, let's go. Okay, good on you. Beautiful responses. Okay, effective communication occurs when, and again, it's not just engineering, but do not underestimate the importance of it. And I'm allowed to say this because I'm married to an engineer. They are not necessarily the strongest with communication. In fact, He's just popped in. So it's across everything you do, communication is critical. Um, so what is it? The intended message is successfully delivered and the, intent, and the intended audience interprets that information accurately. So the communication has worked if all parties, the sender and the receiver, assign very similar, if not identical meanings to the message. And you all, both sides of that communication are responsible for that effective communication. But ultimately, the sender is accountable. Okay, and there's lots that can be done to make it better. I will be asking you questions, so you're not allowed to go to sleep. Good. Oh, Gigan, try and sh I just see you can't hear anybody speaking. Try and log in again. That was the advice somebody gave a little bit. Um, ah, Hitchin, I'm coming to empathy because we're going to look at EQ, emotional intelligence. All right. First thing I want you to think about is being committed. Now, you probably, well, how is that relevant? Successful projects are often reliant on a team's commitment to it. And when people are positive, and more like if the communication is more likely to work. There are three things that you can do, whether you are the sender or the receiver. And believe me, listen actively is also a sender's job. We need to listen very carefully when we speak and when we listen. What do I mean by actively? What's a word that you can put in there to indicate what listening actively means? I like that you're all coming up with good things. Can anybody tell me what active listening is? What comes into your head when you think of that? Oh, um, I'm just going to quickly write in here.
called multitasking. I'm not good at it. Okay, let me see. Concentration, listening without distraction, and listening actively is absolutely those things. Absolutely. It is attention, full attention, but it's also to let the speaker know that you are listening. So a nod, the odd word, and then we go into this next asking questions. Critical asking questions because the person then knows you are being active. So that's brilliant. And then the speaker knows that there's engagement. Okay, feedback, being interactive, brilliant. Um, and this one, please. Please, all of you, give constructive feedback. Some of you will be too shy or you will be reserved by nature. It is critical because your ideas count. And it might be your idea that solves the problem. Thank you so much for your interaction, everybody. You're all being, in, you're all being active listeners. Thank you. Um, and here is a scary stat from the Project Management Institute. One out of five projects fails because of ineffective communication. And that is scary. So it might feel like time is being wasted, but communication is never wasted. But I'm going to give you some handy hints on the next one, on the next slide. And we're going to labor this slide just a little bit. I've got my little notes here as well. Okay, seven C's for good communication. Obviously, I haven't made this up, but I've I've interpreted it for you. Um, firstly, just looking at them, there are two C's that, all, that are almost, contradic almost contradictory. Can you spot them? Okay, they might be, and it doesn't matter if you get it wrong, but they're two that almost contradict each other. Who can, who's brave? The ones that I was thinking about are complete communication, concise, exact, it's co coherent and concise. Good, that was nearly it. Concise and concrete. You see, a lot of them are very similar and a lot of them are potentially conflicting with each other. Complete means lots of information. Concise means be brief. But they both are Critical, complete and concise, exactly, James. Um, so they're both very important. Complete, you need, if you're going to communicate with your audience, you must give them all the information. Okay, and just a few extra things. Ask yourselves those five questions. When, where, what, how and why. Just check you've covered everything, all the bases. And you must consider what your audience knows. Not just what you know and what you think they need to know. What, where are they starting? What do they need to know? And remember the different people in the group might have different amounts of knowledge. So you have to be, oh good Najib can hear, I'm so glad Najib. You, you must consider that your audience will be different. You know, there'll be some that will be more knowledgeable than others. So take that into account um, and please ensure that everyone, so the completeness of this, ensure that everyone receives and understands all that necessary information that you plan to impart. Now, concise, after I've lectured you about being complete, um, it's going to be a bit difficult to now tell you to be concise. All it means is once you've prepared that information, review it, edit it. Nobody wants the waffle. Nobody wants the frilly bits on the edge. Hone in on what you need to do. So you see, you can be complete and concise. You're allowed to add in a joke though. That's not considered waffle. So humor is always a good thing. Don't consider that as being waffle. Okay, then there are three that are fairly close together. Coherent, <sighs> coherent. It just means being logical. So think about how you're presenting the information. 
start from the beginning and go to the end, just like a story, so that it makes sense. It has to be rational to the listener. That's, that's the important thing, you know, go from the beginning to the end and make sure that you've gone in a logical progression through the information. Um, correct, obviously, be accurate, but also be honest. You can't possibly know everything. So be honest about what you still need to find out, perhaps, and what isn't known. Okay, so just there needs to be integrity when you impart information. You're not expected to know everything. It's like now, Lisa's scrambling to find the information to give to you. She might need to go away and ask somebody else for that information. That's what we do. But we need to be honest about it. And never, yeah, so that's, that's important. Um, never assume that everyone knows what you know. Because I think we often do that. We, we speak from a knowledge stance, assuming that others have that knowledge. You can't do that. You must be... You must know your audience. Okay, this clarity thing being clear. No acronyms and jargons. Okay. Anybody, everybody, put an acronym down now that you perhaps use in your workplace that you're familiar with. And then I will explain what it is. If you know what an acronym is, just write it in there. Don't explain what it is. We'll get somebody else to interpret it, particularly if it's an engineering acronym. Excellent God's power. SLA, I certainly don't know what that means. Anybody know what knows? Does anybody know what SLA stands for? Laser. Is that right? God's power? Put your thumb up if he's right, if James is right. No? No thumbs up yet from God's power? No? <laughs> okay. God's power, tell us, what does SLA stand for? Service level agreement. Brilliant. Now, okay, Hermanus got it. Giov oh, Giovanni got it. Oh, fantastic. I thought that was, okay, brilliant. God's power, yes. All right, now, God's power, you wouldn't have been able to use SLA in an environment where James was because James wouldn't have necessarily understood that. So be very careful. Know what your audience knows. You need to know them. Otherwise, you will lose them when you are communicating with them. Um, EIT is an is acronym too, because all it's doing is, is um, it's abbreviating the words, okay? And HVAC, I mean, that's one engineering one I know, but I have to actually look up, look up what it meant, um, which is something heating and something about air conditioning. Um, so be careful. And there's, there's something else. I was watching Steve Mackay uh, uh, present to our first year bachelor students. And I noticed that he used idioms a lot. Those are common phrases that we all have. I'm not going to get through this session. It's already nearly 20 past. Anyway, and he was using them. And I thought, no, don't use that. You must check that they understand it. So here's one. For example, I'm communicating. Someone adds something and I respond with, that's a red herring. That's an idiom. It doesn't mean I'm referring to a fish. A red herring is a distraction. That's what it is. So that's okay if everybody in the audience knows that, but it's most unlikely most of our teams are multicultural, multilingual now. So be very careful. And some of our idioms are so well used that we forget, just like slang, jargon. Steer clear. Keep your English plain. No frills. Okay. Concrete communication, very similar to clear, concise, and complete. But for this one, have a clear reason for why you're communicating and make sure that your action points are very clear. Okay, please provide me feedback on whatever topic it is during our meeting on Monday. So there's no confusion. That's exactly when I wanted and on what topic. Be specific. 
Not courteous. All right, put your thumb up if you think being courteous is important. Just a few thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever. If you think it's necessary, in, mostly in your environment. God's power, I reckon, yes. So does, okay. Asha, now everybody has different styles of communicating everybody, but if I were to counsel anybody, I would say it is critical. I'm glad to see the thumbs up. It is critical. There is no need. Thank you, I think that means 100%. There's no need to ever be, you can be assertive, of course, but that doesn't mean you're not courteous. All right, let me hurry. I'm running out of time. Some hurdles. Be prepared. Always be prepared, and especially if you're anxious. If you are an anxious communicator, but you have got your information all down pat, you will be astonishing. And you will actually surprise yourself if you are prepared and you've practiced and you keep doing this. Don't let it make you steer away from communication. Keep at it. You will be better. And you will be successful. You will communicate better. Don't use the wrong mode. If you need to communicate to somebody but you know there are going to be questions, pick up the phone. Don't send an email because then they'll be backwards and then forwards and then misunderstanding because you're writing an email in a hurry. Bad timing. Don't call your team just before they running out the door to get their first beer. Oh, no, I'm not saying that everybody drinks. I shouldn't say that. But do you know what I mean? If it's a weekend, they're not going to concentrate. Think about your timing. If your English is weak and you have an accent, work on it. If you've got a multicultural team, work on that. Don't lack passion. Because if you don't have passion, you won't sound like you care. You won't sound genuine and nobody else will then care. You lose your audience. And be observant. Watch your audience cues. They'll tell you a lot. All right, you and your EQ. I can't remember who was, who it was that brought up something to do with um, emotional intelligence earlier, but here we are. It helps you break your barriers. Now, I know some of you are probably thinking, well, that's absolute rubbish, but it isn't. And you know what's lovely? Your emotional intelligence grows. It grows as you grow because you learn about people's behavior and you learn about yourself. All right, I'm just referring to that silly cartoon. Sometimes an audience loses concent concentration and stops listening or throws missiles, as in the picture. Could this be your fault? And I mentioned a healthy EQ, EQ could be the solution. You become more self-aware. So if you're too serious, Work on being a little more lighthearted. If you're all, and then you, because you watch human behavior, you can read your audience. You will get better and better at that, I promise you. Um, so if they lack confidence, make a plan. See if you can build them up. You will become much more flexible and much more able able to communicate effectively i promise you okay i'm going fast but the time just speeds away okay i'm there already these are a couple of extra things some people are just easily distracted i agree Hitchin. it is it is difficult to keep people's attention and we're all so different so some of you will be more interested in this topic than others that's natural that's absolutely natural and it does take, it is, as I said in the beginning, it's the receiver's and the sender's responsibility for, for this, to make communication work. As the listener, sometimes we can hide because there are a few of us and there's only one sender usually. And I'm talking about the communicator. But 
it is the responsibility on both sides. Okay, practice makes perfect becoming that expert. It is a cliche. It's true. It's true. And you become more and more um, confident as you go. And as I, and I segue into that one, if you are anxious, be well prepared. Have that information at your fingertips. Be a little bit more knowledgeable than those that you're speaking to so that you can feel confident. And please, everybody, when I say confident, I definitely don't mean show arrogance. Always be modest. You might be a leader, team leader. That's okay. Good on you. But always be modest. Listen to your team. It's actually, I actually think it can be the failure of some people. That arrogance. <laughs> sure, indeed. Okay, get to know your teams. Where are they from? I'm not saying you have to become best friends with them. You don't. But get to know them. Show an interest. We all work in multicultural teams now. Do they have fun? Good listener, 100%. Yep. Good, good comments coming through the chat. And be tolerance, tolerant of difference. Now, you just have to bear with me because I love language. So I said, but not of indifference. Now, everybody, different and indifference are not opposites. I just couldn't resist it. So indifference means that you don't care. So don't be intolerant of indifference. If somebody's not caring, then they need to be taken aside and counseled, and you need to find out why. But be tolerant of difference. Embrace diversity. It is like brainstorming on steroids. That's why in the beginning, before we started, I was asking, where are you from? Because I love it. It's so exciting to be talking to people from all over the place. And what an honor. So be tolerant of difference and embrace it because it can be powerful. And use your team when communicating. Remember, you may be the leader, but you're not necessarily the expert at everything. And people love to be used. They love to be shown to have that. They love that. So use them as part of that communication. Draw them in. Draw on their expertise. And then you will have them on side as well. Um, always check your... Yep, exactly, Angelo. Uh, oh, Patrick's asked me a completely complicated question, Fog Index. Patrick, can I get back to you? Lisa will note your name and I will do some research and get back to you, I promise, because it's something that I'm now interested in, piqued my interest. And that's the other thing, everybody. I might be presenting today, but often we learn so much more from our listeners than we do, than, we, than you are learning from me. So that's really critical, and that's why I'm so grateful for your, for your feedback here in the chat. Um, Okay, always check your audience understands. So they must ask you questions, but never, ever forget that you must check that they are following you. So ask those questions. Use humor. I've said that before, but it must be constructive and it must be appropriate. And be kind. Link to courtesy and target only the audience you need. So referring to my little image, I invited all of you, not because the topic is relevant, but because I didn't want to want you to feel left out. Now I'm sure everybody's busy. That is not necessary. So please target only the audience that you need. Look at that, it's half past and I just finished. I'm very proud. Questions. Lisa, have I got a little bit of time for some questions, if there are any? Um, actually, Edwina, Riley just uh, messaged me that you can take your time to go beyond 2.30 if you still have more to share with the audience. I've finished. I, ra I roared through <laughs> <laughs> it. Um, but if there are any questions, as Lisa said, I've got a little bit of time. So 
anything. And are they allowed to use the mic, Lisa? Are you able to facilitate that? If there's any spoken um, one. I'm not sure about that functionality, to be honest, but we haven't done that before. We just um, do let just them. Type. I'm a quick reader. Okay. Oh, thanks, guys. But if there are any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. Oh, thank you, Ata. Thanks, Asha. No worries. I, <laughs> it, it was, it was, sorry, I had to get through it so quickly. No worries. It was lovely to have you on board. Thank you so much. And please, I have got time if anybody wants to. No, thank you for attending, everybody. Um, and my email address, I think, has been put somewhere. So please, if you have any questions that you've thought about, and, ah, oh, who was it? Fog. Fog something. I have to I have to find out about that. Please can you if you still if you still haven't left and you're still there, please fog index low. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna write that down. Where my pens? Fog. Lisa, right? Oh there my pens. Yes, I will be um, posting your email address fog now to the chat. Was that you, Asha? Asha Raphael. Okay, I'm going to find out about that and I will post something. No, it wasn't you. <laughs> but thank you for remembering. You're a good listener. Um, <sighs> Giovanni, we do. It's part of our bachelor degrees, I think. But, you know, it's not, it's not a bad idea creating a... Um, a micro credential around this, Giovanni. I will look into that and perhaps I can actually present a little bit of it. I'd love to do that. So I'll look look at that. Thank you for the question. Um, and I hope wherever you are, if it's morning or afternoon or evening, that you um, there was somebody from New Zealand. That's pretty impressive because it's late there. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. At on no certificate for this because it was just a soft topic, not a technical topic. Um, but as Lisa said, you need to look out for Lisa. What do they look out for? The technical webinars. Hey? Um, Tadas is from the UK. Okay, super. So that, so you're pretty early there. My interest in Bachelor Online Civil Instruction I'm um, from St. Lucia Caribbean. Oh, how wonderful. Okay, Lisa will take all of this information at value as we grow in our career. Giovanni, I completely agree. Thank you for the follow-up of that. I do, I do think there is not enough of this in engineering. But as I say, so you did a oh, the undergrad with EIP. Yep. And I will chat to I will chat to the Dean, Steve, about this. Please comment on the importance of fighting both spoken and written. Okay, that is definitely something important. I will get something, I will get a little paper together and it will be sent to all of you. That is on my to-do list about the FOG index. Oh, good on you, Vincent. I, will, I promise you, you will all get something on the fog, fog index. I can't tell you right now because I'm, I, I don't have the information at hand, but I'm now, my curiosity is peaked. No questions, though, apart from the fog. Fog index. It must refer to the fact that there's clarity and then there's fog when we communicate, I would imagine. That's where it comes from. Um, that's all. No more questions. Thank you so much, everybody. I think this virtual virtual stuff goes on for a few days still, all different sessions, and I think the information is on our website. But those of you from Mauritius, Botswana, and Namibia, we will be giving, uh, the dean will be giving uh, some seminars in those centres in November. So just look out for those of you from those parts of the world. No, no uh, certificate for this, Adamu, because it was just a soft topic. Um, and Kogotato, 
it's a big fat pleasure. And I know I can't pronounce that name very well. Koko Tatsu. Yep. <laughs> um, thank you. Inaka. Thank you. What language? What language? Kinivua. That's. What is that? I know, I know it says thank you, Vinaka. What language? Thank you from let God. <laughs> God's power, where is that? Where is that flag? Yes, it is. <laughs> Pleasure, I tell. Oh, Nigeria. Oh, thank you from Jacob. Give me a heads up. <laughs> Uh, Angelo, I will make sure that perhaps I will do one of the, the um, technical webinars for, for Riley and, and make it a little more technical, a bit more focused on engineering. Perhaps I can do that. And you certainly don't have to call me ma'am, Ross. I'm just Edwina. And lovely to hear from South Africa. Where is that lovely blue flag from? Jacob, Brian. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. Ah, Botswana. We might see you guys soon. Oh, good on you, Giovanni. That's fantastic. Now, I know there's another session coming up shortly. I'm not sure. Algeria. Oh, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Vincent, we would love to do that. I must say, I've never visited Kenya. I'd love to. Algeria, oh, where are you from? Gosh, you'd think that I would have more, a better knowledge of these beautiful countries. Oh, good on you, Angelo. Uganda. Wow, it's fantastic. What an honor to speak to you from all over the place. Ah, uh, Philippines. I think we've just had a team over there in the Philippines. I wonder if you saw them, Oh, Jones. They visited, I think, Manila. Oh, good. Brian, come and say hello. So you were on this, at the session. Thank you to Mabili. Lovely to have you. Ah, uh, Tafara Zimbo from Zimbabwe. <laughs> We've got a lovely learning support officer based in Bulawayo. She's been with us forever and ever, Isabella, Isabel Sibanda. Fantastic. Oh, I know. We need, we need to be setting up more learning centers. I think it would be good. Ah. Uh, Again, Adamo, that would be a question for our course advisors. I'm sure Lisa will get back to you. We do have them, I think, on our website as well, the scholarships. Um, Edwina, excuse me. Uh, You're going to hear me show. Um, yeah, no worries. <laughs> I'm just chatting yeah. away. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. We've got to make space for the next session. Um, Great. So um to to everyone there will be a prize draw for our virtual open week and kind of fill out your details and complete our short survey survey below you can scan the qr i can also send this code to you guys hold on so i'll send the code in the chat box please answer the survey All right, there's a survey code and please scan the, the scan the QR if you want. And um, I will also put in here um, the link to book to a course advisor if you'd like to have like a one on one conversation about the course that you're interested in. If you need help 
for more information in deciding and applying for a course or choosing a course for your um, engineering career goals, please go ahead and um, book a call with a course advisor. And you can choose your own time for that. You can book a slot and the course advisor would be um, setting that time to call you as well. And uh, Edwina, I will be posting your email here as well, right? And I've already received an email from Christian. Thank you, Christian. If you're still there, I will get onto it and respond to you as soon as I can. All right. Thank you, okay. Lisa. Thank you so much for all your help with this session. So I also um, posted an email. I posted it again, the email for our webinars team. So if you have more questions about webinars and any other questions, you can send it to us. And for questions relating to this topic, effective communication, you can send an email to Irina. I also posted her email in the chat now. So you have a lot of resources here if you have if you need more information. Brilliant. And by the way, for those asking for a certificate, I'd like to um, repeat that we won't be giving a certificate for this because it's not a technical webinar, but you can always fill out the survey for the prize draw. For technical webinars, you can go to our website and you can um, choose any of our technical webinars that will be presented by our lecturers. Um, and they are really... Um, experienced engineers so they can give you a lot of insights about certain technical engineering topics and you'll get a certificate a digital certificate for it so yep um just go to our website www.eit.edu.au here are our phone numbers for inside and outside australia and you can also be our courses at www.edu.edu I'm um, sorry, www.eit.edu.au slash schedule. So if you go to that, then um, you can see our upcoming courses as well. Return to the QR code. Okay, I got a request to return to the QR code, so I'm going there now. Thank you for letting me know that. All right, we'll be staying on for um, a couple of minutes and um, feel free to copy those um, links, email addresses, scan the QR code. And again, we would like to thank everyone for joining us today. And this effective um, communication session is really an eye opener to a lot of us. And there's so much more to communication that we can learn from this. And I hope that you can also apply this in your workplaces or in your daily interactions. And again, thank you so much. We still have other events for our virtual open later this afternoon and tomorrow and Thursday. Please check out our website for that. If you'd like to attend more, please do so. You are very much welcome. And thank you so much to our lecturer or presenter, um, Ms. Edwina Ross. That is a very compelling uh, presentation and really informative. And if you need to say more or your your um, final <laughs> words to the audience, feel free to do so as well. Oh, thank you, Lisa, those kind words. And thank you, everybody, for attending. And I wish you well today and through the rest of the week. And thank you so much for your help, Lisa. Thank you, Rina. Thank you, everyone. We will be seeing you in our next session. I will be um, switching this off now. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. Bye bye. Thanks, Amana. See you soon. Lisa, can you shut this down for me? I just have to go into another meeting. Is that okay? Yep, I will. You can go. Thank right. you. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody.